So you love collecting comic books. Have you ever thought that maybe there's a way you could either at least reduce the cost of collecting for yourself or maybe even make a profit in this hobby while you're also building your collection? Well, I just kind of fell into this back during COVID. I got back into collecting and I just kind of started doing different things like cleaning and pressing, looking for deals. And before I knew it, I had gotten a pretty good process for cleaning and pressing and buying and selling. And this year, I didn't even realize it till the last couple of months. I'm already well on my way to making over $100,000 in net profit this year. And that's just in my spare time. So if you're interested in this type of thing, this video is for you because I'm going to give you three tips to help you along your way to get to either having a reduced cost for your collection for collecting or to actually make a profit doing this. Number one, you need to find a top-notch quality third-party presser, cleaner and presser, or just an individual is even better to clean and press your books before you submit them in for grading. Or better yet, learn and learn to clean and press books yourself. It's actually a lot cheaper to get into the hobby than you might think. For well under a thousand dollars, you can get everything you need, probably under 500. I actually should have tell you that so I could tell you my website, though, improvedcollecting.com, will have that information. Basically, everything I use is listed on there, and it's a press itself. My press cost me $105, and that was probably the biggest expense. And then just a bunch of whole of some of the things I already had. You know, I had copy paper and a few other things. But, yeah, if you really wanted to do this on a budget, you could do it. But there's lots of good information out there. I mean, Captain Mike has his book, which is awesome. That's how I got started. But I found that... After I had used his process, I began to make changes to it and develop my own process. And I found that I was tweaking and changing my process pretty much every day. I would say there was something different I was doing. But about three or four months ago, I realized that I was not changing my process anymore. And I've kind of had the same process over the last three or four months. So I'm like, okay, I finally honed in on something that works really well for me. If you followed my channel, you know I've had a good amount of success finding books, cleaning and pressing books, submitting them to CGC, and getting grades that are way beyond my expectations. So I used the knowledge and the information that I've gained over the past few years to build a community for cleaners and pressers. We just started. We have our alpha phase. My entire process is in a short course on there. It's about 10 videos long. I say short, but some of the videos are 30, 40 minutes. But basically everything I do to clean and press books is in that course. And I'm also working on a full course, which will be something like 50, 60 videos outlining exactly with detail. But what I'm doing is I'm getting feedback from the alpha members on how to build and improve that course right now. There also will be a course on how to buy and sell. So if you want to check that out, just go to my website, improvedcollecting.com, and you'll find information on there. Those of you following this channel probably mostly already know about it. But yeah, learn to clean and press books. I... Right now, I think I'm the only community out there that teaches cleaning and pressing as part of a website membership type thing. But man, the people that have already signed up are just uh, amazing. I mean, there's probably a thousand years of experience in cleaning and pressing already signed up for the community. The exchange of ideas already has been amazing. Feedback has been really positive. There's a couple, I don't know if you want to call them proprietary things that I do, cleaning and pressing, that I don't think anybody else does. The feedback has been very good on those couple of things and people are just loving it. And they want me to keep that information inside the community so I won't reveal that. But if you're interested and you want information that nobody else has, I mean, I, you hear that all the time, right? I don't want to sound like one of these infomercials, which I guess this kind of sounds like. But So that's it for number one. Either find a third party presser or learn to do it yourself. Next, my recommendation is whatever you love to collect and you want to to buy and sell for a profit, focus on what you love to buy and sell. There are grails, keys, whatever, for pretty much everything that everybody collects. If you love horror, there's plenty of grails. If you love Bronze Age, if you love Bronze Age Wolverine only, there's plenty of books that you could find to clean and press and buy. If you want to, in other words, what I'm saying is specialize. I mostly do a lot of Copper Age and Late Bronze Age book, be, books because that's the era I grew up in. And there are plenty of keys, you know, like your Hulk 340s, you know, ASM 129s. I guess that's more mid uh, Bronze Age. But, 
you know, I just show you a few of the books that I just did recently. Now, this is a modern book. I just happened to get it, but I thought I'd show you because it's a 9.9. .9. Um, but this one, I have been trying to get for two or three years. I finally got a newsstand copy of Wolverine number one from 1988. I have my childhood copy right here. And I got, it's a direct, I got a 9.8. But this one <laughs> is not necessarily going to take its place. I'm going to keep that one. But yeah. You have no, maybe you do have an idea of how hard it is. I think there's seven sales of newsstands over the last year. It's just ridiculously hard to get in 9.8. And I finally did it. Um, here's our, our Daredevil 170, you know, early or late Bronze Age or early um, Copper Age uh, newsstand copy. It has a lot of value. Um, a lot of Daredevil fans, and I'm one of them. And of course, you got your McFarlane goodness. Anytime I see any kind of Amazing Spider-Man at Farland. I have to pick it up. There's a 9.8, number 309. So those are just a few of the books that I love. Whatever you love, if it's late 90s books, you can find a way probably to make a profit at that. If it's anything, you name it. If you do Golden Age, whatever, specialize. That is my recommendation. Now, of course, you could just do everything and anything. I mean, I do specialize, but I'll buy some modern books and I'll buy a few Silver Ages as well. Just mainly what is the bulk of what you do. Kind of specialize that way you can get really good because papers and the way books are dealt with, pressed, even purchased and sold, the clientele is different. You have to learn the ins and outs. It's, it's a lot of information. And yeah, same thing as cleaning and pressing, have a process for buying and selling. For example, when you're looking for books online, you need to have a process for how to inspect the books. To Because online, I mean, photos could be bad. You need to train your eyes to know what to look for and what to avoid. Of course, I cover this stuff once again in my cleaning and pressing community, if you're interested in that. Once again, ImprovedCollecting.com. Would love to have feedback, more feedback, more members. The more the merrier, so we can, the more ideas we get in that community, the better we can be. My goal is to create like the ultimate method for cleaning and pressing books. Mine is okay, I'm pretty sure. My success, my results are good but I know it's not anywhere near as good as it can be. We gotta improve it and that, and I think a couple hundred people working on this idea or more together is much better than just me sitting here in a basement or wherever, <laughs> trying to figure it out on my own, you know. Right, strength in numbers, right? So yeah, stick to what you love and have a process for how you buy and sell books. And that takes me to number three, which is have a process for everything you do, everything. I have certain days of the week that I look for books, whether it be going out in the field, but mostly looking online, the different places that I look for books. I look for books at different times. There's better days on eBay to look for books. There's better days on sites like Shortbox to look. Collectorscomics.com has quarterly auctions. I set aside a couple days to look at those auctions every four times a year. I mean, just have a routine, set a calendar and stick to it. Um, buy and sell comics the same way every time. Make sure you stay within your budget, of course. And then once the books come in, have a process for inspecting them. You're going you're gonna to probably 9 out of 10 books, hopefully you're cleaning and pressing and submitting. Maybe that 1 out of 10 or 2 out of 10, you just resell. Or maybe there was shipping damage. You have to have a process for all of this stuff. How are you going to return books? How are you going to resell books? Where are you going to list them at? And that takes me to the selling part. you got to have a process for selling. you got to have your go-to selling places like I like to sell on Instagram because generally the fees are a lot lower to sell through there and you have access to a lot of people with a lot deeper pockets in general that will be members of that type of, well I don't know about members of that type of site, but subscribe to that type of site. My favorite one is Elite 11. Over 40,000 people subscribe to that channel and when I have a grail to sell, that's the best place to do it. I get low fees. I can, my margins are high, so I can sell at a good discount. The buyer's happy, I'm happy, everybody's happy in that scenario. Once you build that process, it's not really that hard to do this. It's just, and it's, but it's fun. You'd think it would be monotony, right? But there's not because I'm bringing in books. Some of the books I bring in are going on my wall, into my collection. Some I'm able to show here on YouTube. Some are just big, giant books that I would never otherwise be able to have in my hands. I buy them, I clean them, I get to enjoy them for a while, and then I, of course, sell them, you know, to a happy person that's been looking for that grail and probably been saving maybe a lifetime to get that book, and you're able to spread joy to them. So joy just everywhere. The seller you buy the book from is happy. They've got their love out of it, their, their joy from having that book. 
their joy from getting a good price, selling it to me, my joy from having the book, enjoying it, cleaning it, pressing it, and then obviously the ultimate destination where you send the book to, whoever buys it, lots of joy there. <laughs> and that's kind of what it's all about in this hobby. Being a big nerd and just having fun. Getting away from the real... When I'm up here, it's just... I'm in the 80s again. <laughs> I'm just a kid in a proverbial candy store, a comic shop. I can even smell the paper, you know. You remember when you walk into a comic shop when you were a kid and that was the first thing that would hit you, you know. And just getting lost in time. You would be in there two hours before you knew it. Your parents are walking up and having to grab you by the arm to get you out of there. Everybody remembers that, I'm sure, from their childhood. So I hope this has been helpful. Please check out my website, ImprovedCollecting.com. You'll see what I use. If you sign up for the membership, that's great. I would love to help you. Some people want that little bit of acceleration in their process. I mean, a lot of the stuff I've learned, I've learned on my own, but it's taken me three years. If you want to skip a lot of that, that's what I'm there for. If you want to do it yourself, I understand. People want to do that. Just do the search. Um, do the research. Spend the time. You can figure this out, too. Um, start with Captain Mike, though. He is the best place, in my opinion, to get started. But, yeah been fun. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.